too wet, baby, let me nibble on you Ooh. So while it, while it, you wanna bang, bang You wanna come back, I want the same thing I'm for the culture, I'm here with legit, not legit, okay You said... White boy badass, is that what you said? Yes, that's what they call you in Florida? That's what they said, yes, yes. Oh, okay, so that's what everybody call him. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming through. How you, you doing? Thank you, I'm blessed. I'm okay, good. so. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm tired. I was telling you earlier when I was out Yeah, you good. You gonna catch, so. your, catch your second? Your second. Yeah! <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so before we get into it, you are a Florida boy. For sure. What part of Florida? I'm from Lakeland, Florida, Polk County. Okay, yeah, Polk it. County. Polk right. County, born and raised. Yeah, yeah, That's where yeah. you're from. You Polk. still live there? No, nah, I don't live there now. I had to get out. Where you from? Where you at now? Well, I'm now, I'm, I'm in like, I would say I'm more, more in Tampa right now, but I'm over here in Orlando with my brother, too, so we everywhere. You know, just trying you to like really, Tampa? We, I like Tampa. Tampa showed me a lot of love. That's like my second home. Orlando, like, you know, my second and a half. Yeah. You know, so. I like Tampa. The I, I like four, I four court or anywhere with I four, I'm good. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's my, that's my, my I'll spot. Tell you. Okay, so let's start with how you came up with the name Lee J. Mm -hmm. Now you did tell me a little bit. You said your name is Lee. Levi, right. Uh huh. So my so, real, yeah, my real name is Levi. So mm -hmm. Lee J came from I was a J when I started rapping, and I didn't name myself. Somebody gave me the name. Oh, the nickname. Yeah. So from a friend or just somebody well, that? Well, Lee J wasn't a nickname. It was like my name is Levi. So my mom, my friends call me Lee. Mm -hmm. And then I was a J when I started rapping, mm -hmm. and then this lady was like, you know, you're a J, Lee J. They put it together and then kind of flip it on the word legitimate legit you know what i'm saying so okay. it kind of okay. so the lady gave me the name you know so i've just been rocking with it since like 2000 i like it i like it 2006 about yeah, over 10 years i had Two, 2006 is when you started your music well i started doing music in middle school and since then like i was a, when i got the name in middle school so did you wake up one day and say you know i'm gonna just do this or you always nah, wanted to do it always, it's what i always if you know me this is what i always want to do i'm not one of them rappers that just wake up and say i want to try to be an artist today nah i'm a no, i'm a true no. artist like it ain't a it ain't no fad like no trend to me this is what i did i feel you For sure. did you do like music like in school like did you like do any oh um, well actually i did music in school well where we from football is everything so what i did mm -hmm. is i basically i made the songs for our football team i played on the football team and then football is like i'm telling you where we from that's our bread and butter like we got a big scoreboard video mm -hmm. we got turf on our field yeah you know it's a different little level high school football like a baby mm -hmm. uh, it's a baby college really so i yeah. made the songs for the um for the team and for the like the anthems to what they still playing. Oh snap! So I, kinda, yeah, I, I got in, like, in middle school or like in high. You said high, high school, school, right? High you school, just yeah. said high school. Okay. High school. I started in the ninth grade, and every year like I made a new song until mm -hmm. I, so they only got like three or four songs when I was there, and I ain't never made That's anything. Insane. But they they still playing to the day, and like now the new students know my old songs, and they're like. That is so. What um what's your graduating class? Uh, 2010. Oh, that's so, crazy. So you got like you got like eight years, like yeah, yeah. you know, generations listening yeah, to your stuff. That's so dope. Yeah, really did cool. you play football? I played football. I played you did? I didn't know why I received it. Oh, see, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I was smart. I was scared, but I was smart. You know what I'm saying? But hey. But music was right. your thing. Would you have tried to play football? Like, well, did you want to like go pro? Or was it just I, something that you? Not, I mean, of course, you know, if you're doing something, you would love to go pro doing it. But yeah. football, I love football. Everybody around me is, you know, that's what we grew up doing. Mm -hmm. I could, I could have went and played college football, mm -hmm. but I, cho I chose to do music. Music was my passion. passion. That's what I felt like I would thrive in and entertainment, not just you know only like I feel like I could go. I mean, you really can't go play college football now that you're a little older, but I could go to college yeah. and do what I need to do at, mm -hmm. any t at a time in our life where I feel like I would want to do it, but I chose to pursue my dream since after high school. So That's what's up. Just, Did you have like a college in mind? I, I, I'm going to play for this school. Well, well my brother, went, my brother's my, my manager as well. He, he went to FAMU, so I was going up there in Tallahassee for a little bit working, mm -hmm. and I was going to just go to FAMU and transfer to um, Florida State. But right now... <laughs> I'm going to hear Florida State, yeah. man. Let me go ahead. Okay. People, you know, Shout out. Here's the spear. I'm in with twin. I'm in with twin. For sure. I'm in with twin. I just my friends, you know, they played they, someone played at Florida, some played at Miami, some yeah. played at Florida State. So I was always just repping my friends and mm -hmm. my people that I knew. But I mean this football would play the uh as far as discipline, it really showed me how to be disciplined in life. You know what? And it played a good That's role. That's so true. Cause For I was sure. talking to my mom now. I don't know a lot of rules of football, mm -hmm. okay? But my mom is a huge football fan. And I remember she <laughs> sat down one day and she was like explaining the rules to me. Yeah, and I was true. like, yo, if you understand the rules of football, you can apply this shit to all sure. parts of yeah. life. Like I was like, yo, this is crazy. 100%. So, okay. Do you have any music 
background like in your family or are you like the first like that's like really passionate about it okay. Cause I, I know like some people they have mm -hmm. uncles cousins whoever right. in the Others, you know in the industry people. that helped them kind of I have nobody in the industry um nobody's ever made it mm -hmm. with music with me um I do my history is I found out after I did music is that you know you, you get into music so you kind of like hey anybody in the family ever like try to do this or that yeah so my great my grandpa um, my grandpa's mom and dad I found out and I actually got it now like mm -hmm. they, they these old transcripts they used to write songs and play the guitar and play the spoons so I think you know without without knowing that and I found that passion and found a love for that I feel like it, it kind of passed down the generation yeah before. but I never met them or anything they, yeah. they passed away they, they was my great great you know yeah what I'm so I found, but I got all their songs they written and stuff, mm -hmm. and I found some cassette tapes. Oh, that's so dope! Wanted, so hopefully I can sample them and like kind of like utilize something they created that and kind of bring dope. it to this year. So I mean, that's that's just something that. I How did you even come across that? Was it just like you like? Do you live in an old house and then you nah, have like old nah, cassettes and nah. stuff, and then like your parents? I had wish like, I wish it was that easy, man. Now nah, my I think my grandpa gave it to one of my aunts, and my aunts was you know I ain't cheating about to do nothing with it. I'm like yo, let me get that. Yeah. So I, I just got it from one of my aunts when they was passing it around. Mm -hmm. Like oh, you know, old, you know, sometimes different people in the family they hold on to the the, the treasures of the family. So mm -hmm. I was like, let me grab that one. So I got grab you. It. All right, so. If we had to talk about, or if we had like, or you had like a top list, mm -hmm. you don't have to, they don't have to be in order, no specific order, okay. but if you had like a dream collaboration, because I know people have different influences, people have different, actually, you know what, let's talk about your influences first, okay. and then we'll talk about, you know, who you would, like your dream collaboration, okay, if you could okay. just team up. So, who are some influences that you would say, like, for your music, you kind of like, um. gravitate to? When you're like, like my favorite rapper is Lil Wayne. You know, oh, okay, Lil Wayne, okay. You know he the see he the goat, but he the I mean, whole goat, the sure. whole goat. Um, I love Lil Wayne. Um, my, definitely one of my big influences. Uh, Ludacris is one of my influences. Hell growing yeah. up, uh, Ti. Yeah. Being, being Ti definitely. Uh, being from Florida, yeah. Trick Daddy. Dirty style. Yeah, Dirty for sure. Style. <laughs> um, I, love, I didn't really. I'm. A, I love Jay Z now, but as a youngster, being from Florida, I didn't understand him. Yeah. The way I can, con you know, I can, I can yeah. digest his music and lyrics now to a point where. I I know what he's talking about, different things. But, but as a younger kid, I can only understand like Trick Daddy Plies growing up. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? From Florida Ross. You yeah. Know, just um, UGK, Underground Kings, Bun B, Pimp C, uh, Outcast for sure. Uh, oh, hell yeah. Hell just, yeah. just like that kind of good vibe and good sound. And also like having the beats, you feel me? Because I feel like the yeah. boys had beats, but then they said something as well. So mm -hmm. like that, that kind of mesh of having the beat to where you feel it and then you can say something that's being felt as well. It's, it's kind of like the mess that I like. I got you. So. If you had a collaboration or if you had somebody <laughs> that actually do you want to be signed? Uh, do you want to be signed or do you want to Yeah, give me give me the right deal. I'll sign it. The right deal. The what, right what, deal. The, what, as an independent artist, I want to be able to control my creator. Mm -hmm. My creative Because I know that's a I know that's uh -huh. a like big concern of course with a lot of artists is being 100%. able to have that, you know, creative control mm -hmm. and a lot of the time when you go into the industry you lose all of that when you sign away because a lot of people don't understand yeah. you know how certain things work so you know they want to get signed and then now they don't have creative control yeah. and they you know they now, think okay i tell so, you as, as soon as you get signed you know you put in another person's opinion into your into your pocket you know, I say that every time so it's you don't time. even have to get signed say you mm -hmm. put an investor and this person is breaking bread with you in your situation mm -hmm. you think that they're gonna be quiet and not tell you what they think their bread is right. gonna be your best sort no you get as soon as you add anything like that into a situation it's a piece of you know of what you're doing that belongs yep, to them that belongs so, to them now and now it's not yours right exactly. mm -hmm. but you still want as an artist you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make some money with somebody or spend some money with somebody it's, it's you have to in this industry yeah mm -hmm. but it's just at what cost at investing what is, what is yourself going? yeah yeah how how far are you willing to take it how much yeah. are you willing to the sacrifice yourself? how much are you willing to sacrifice 100%. so now if you had a dream collaboration right. and somebody wants to say yo i got you i'm gonna take you up under my wing yeah who was the one person where you like dog man, put jay-z what you mean okay <laughs> I'm a huge Jay Z, Z fan. I'm a huge Jay Z and Damon Dash fan. Now you know Dash, there's Jay some Z. background Shout stuff out, yeah. that you know that go on with that. But I have mm -hmm. like this huge admiration for the both of them. You know right. for different reasons. I love Damon Dash. I downloaded his Culture Bird, well, the last Culture Vultures um, audio book. Right. I don't know if you heard it, uh -huh. but I recommend that for everybody. Kenyatta Briggs is on it. He you knows it's a part of a hip hop motivation. It's a good book to listen mm -hmm. to. Like they teach you 
so many like as far as the business side, maybe that shit's a fucking right. Yeah. So yeah. so is Jay Z. For sure. But like they both are like masterminds in like two completely different ways and I just I admire them both. So it's definitely really dope. They started the empire. Um, sure. They did it. They, really they did, did. And I feel like, you know what? Low key, do you feel like people be trying to embrace Damon Dash from you know I mean, saying? 'Cause I feel like they don't be giving that man they I, give him his credit, but I feel like as a, but Jay Z was also a part of the you know the the, the business, but he was an mm -hmm. artist, so he always exactly. would be put in that light above exactly. for being the artist side. Yeah. So I mean, I definitely don't want to discredit uh, Dame, but I mean, me personally, I don't know everything he did. I know he played, yeah. uh, played a very very big part Major in the situation. Role that, yeah. And not only in Jay Z life, but Kanye life and this other rock, mm -hmm. rock nation and Rockefeller artists. Mm -hmm. So it's just. And it's the, it's just you know they both created something together and now they at a point where they came to they a just, different you yeah. know. Yeah. Do, do you think it was beef between them? Because I don't feel like it was ever real mm -hmm. beef. I think it was just a I don't know kind of it, difference of opinion. I don't like, know if it's beef. That's the, that's the, that's the. Because I was watching. Okay, so I was watching the Breakfast Club interview and like he was like it really was never no beef. It was kind of just like that difference of like all right, do you want to stay independent? Right. And, own the rights to all your uh -huh. shit or do you want to go corporate and have other niggas on your money like, right. uh, you know other people touching your bread it's so always it's three like, sides to the story you know like and i feel that way too sides. but do you think that like i don't i, I don't i don't think i mean obviously it's something went wrong because they're not working together still. yeah it's a difference mm -hmm. it's a different they find they, there's differences in the relationship yeah whether they able to still be you know like men about it still be you know cordial to mm -hmm. speak maybe they don't speak but maybe they see each other it's not like it's not like no beef i'm about to kill you beat your ass yeah like, i don't think yeah yeah like i feel like people try to blow it out of proportion like, it was like it's two old businessmen it's two old people old, old businessmen who don't do business anymore yeah you know what i'm saying that's they grew apart yeah. i think they professionally grew apart yeah. And they they did what they needed to do, For you sure. know, as you know, and I think I think it was pretty clean. I mean, of course, like if that's your family, you mm -hmm. you, you, don't, you might feel a kind of way. Right. You feel me? But at the end of the day, I feel like it's all love. I feel like you know. They're too rich to get mad at each other. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell you, like we all making money out here. Yeah. Like I'm gonna put it right back on. We straight. But like, right so just working with them guys. But music is taking me, to, you know, from New York to LA to to South. So you South have travel with yeah, your music yeah, yeah, and stuff sure. like that. Okay. I mean, we're doing more. It's it's a lot of groundwork and a lot of work to be done. It's a big yeah. world. You know what I'm saying? And I don't I don't want to get stuck in like a big fish in a small pond. Oh, but yeah. Everybody know you're here, but I mean, what is that doing for you right. if people don't know you outside of your bubble? You know? Exactly. So, like, being out there is is major key. Major key of sure. course. So what are you doing at the beat? Are you performing? Um, was it just like a personal invite? Well, right like, now it's it's um I got a couple people that I know that have some ins and outs. You know what I'm saying? So right now I'm just out there working right now. I don't I'm not mm -hmm. doing any performances, nothing like yeah. that. Yeah. But I've, I've never really been out there, so this is my first time being able to set things up. So next year, you know, I got a hand in things. I know what it be, know what yeah. to do, and I can actually set up performances and things like mm -hmm. that to what it makes sense. Right now, it wouldn't make sense for me to perform mm -hmm. just from be, my perspective because I'm just I need to figure it out first. But that's what we you. going for, for, for sure. That's what's up. One hundred percent. Okay, so. You got a lot of followers on your Instagram, okay? Yeah. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Because you do got a large following. They, they fool so, me. And they, they are. They the are. People. How many Shout people? out to the people. You know, Shout out to everybody that's on here. Yeah. Um, have you worked with any major names that you, you know, you proud to say, like, look. I mean. No, I don't. I don't do that because you do have a, a big phone, so I feel thank like. Thank you, thank you. And it, I mean, it's, it's that's hard to do. It is, that's hard it is. To do. And it's I had to do it organically. Like that's ten years grinding. Like yeah. Like, like I don't like. I, we had this conversation me and my team. It's like a lot of things that people have done. I've already been there, met them, and I'm coming back by again yeah. on my grind again, talking to these folks again. Yeah. Like, I, I know all Central Florida DJs. They know me. They know who I am. Mm -hmm. But now when I'm coming back and I'm a familiar face to them, and I'm already working with them, mm -hmm. it's a lot. It's 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 easier, but at the same time, it's it's a still a, a new market almost. But following is you know it's everything, but it's really like turning that following into your customer. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Making your fans, yeah. you know, because people will watch your time. stuff. People will watch your it's, stuff, but they don't actually. Instagram exactly. is free. You know what I'm yep. saying? Instagram is free. I think there's. I think it's crazy how many like because back in the day, you know, artists didn't have these huge databases to post their oh, those artistry that that was, was that like, didn't you, you exist put like, your music out and then you were secluded like that yep. these it's a lot of mystery like i was watching an interview with maya right and she was talking about how back in the day like when singles were released you know mm -hmm. it was a big thing yeah, to yeah. go to the record store and get that one single nah. and it's like now you can just post that shit on a fucking like you know database and exactly. it's exposed to Millions. millions of people and you just never know when that shit's gonna jump off and i tell people all the time like 
the music industry the reminds me of school. Like, there's different levels to this shit. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody can do music. Not everybody, like, some people be like, oh, well, you know what? If you do music, it's a lost cause. It's not even that it's a lost cause. It's just different levels to it. I say the same thing with doctors. If you go to a major university, how many people you think is in a major university trying to be a doctor? Uh, yeah. You feel me? Some doctors are going to be major surgeons. Some people are going to be working at a major hospital. Some may work at just a middle school. and You know what I mean? Some people may work at, you know, a center care or something like that. Yeah. So I feel like there's just different levels. So everybody can be successful in the industry. It's just a matter of, like, how hard you go, what level you're trying to actually reach in your artistry and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I, I definitely think that, you know, Nah, it's levels. Uh, yeah, and, it's and definitely levels to it. Like, it's definitely how levels. People, how many people play football trying to get to the NFL? You might not exactly. ever make it up, but I mean, it's the statistic, you know, that, but it's it's different. The music is different because, like like I said, if you want to use it as football, I tell my people this all the time. Like, if I ball out in high school, I'm mm -hmm. going to go to college, a good college. Yeah, exactly. If I ball out in college, these scouts don't know me, and I'm going to go to the NFL with this music thing. You could have been a successful artist, and yeah. I try to do the same exact thing, and it don't work. And because it don't, mm -hmm. it's all about what, what the people want. Exactly. That's the difference. Is the people are the deciding factor. Them people, y'all listening right now, all y'all listening, y'all the people who matter. If I put out a song matter. and it's my favorite song, <laughs> it don't matter if it's my favorite song. It matters if y'all like it. So make sure you, you know, doing what the people want. And you never going to get all the people. Of course. And Enjoy. I tell people that all the time. You're, you... You have to understand that your market. You gotta find your, your market. market. Yeah, you have to find your market. You have to know mm -hmm. who, who your audience is, who your crowd is, and then go from there. Like people think that you know, oh well, if I start this music thing, like I gotta catch everybody's attention. Nah, like, nah, that's not how that. it works. You can't. You can't we, do it. We had it this that conversation. Way. Michael Jackson. How many albums did Michael Jackson sell? Shit, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just say, let's just say he went about, you know, at least over 8 million, of you course. know what I'm saying? But how many people are in this world? Billion. Not 8 million. <laughs> so, that <laughs> right. is going to show you the most beloved pop singer, the king of pop. Mm -hmm. This man didn't sell to all the world. He sold exactly. to his portion his, of the world, his yeah. market. Even though everybody in the world might know him, but it's mm -hmm. just that market, you know, so it's always a difference. So, yeah. I just kind of use it as you got to find your niche, your market, and the people that want to support you. Mm -hmm. it, and tell your story to where them people that can relate to you are your fans yeah, and your people. So. It's always that. Hey, One more time for the people blazing. in the back. <laughs> Do you know where a majority of your um your fans are from? Because I know yeah. Instagram has like Instagram. Instagram does Facebook have it too? Like Facebook, Facebook has. I got. Do you know where a majority like, of your fans? My are Facebook from? is bigger than my Instagram. Okay. My my Facebook has oh, like wow. hundred and I want to say over one hundred thirty eight thousand followers on Facebook, but I the difference. Is, yeah. I'm <laughs> Instagram, but it really, so I'll be honest, it's really Central Florida, Tampa, mm -hmm. Orlando, and then my next, my next one is Atlanta, and then my next one is like, like Miami, it's like, it, it breaks it's it down, a, yeah. so my main, my main corridor is Central Florida, and then it breaks off into like the, the cities that now I'm touching, like when mm -hmm. I travel to these cities, I see the, the imprints increasing slowly but surely, just for me being, like if I'm in Orlando now, now all these folks that don't even know about me, yeah. you know, check it out, but the impressions keep going, so the more groundwork we do, the more it picks up in other cities, but since I'm, the I-4 corridor, is my main hub of like followers being you know my, my recognition comes from that mm -hmm. for sure all right so i did watch some of your videos uh -oh. and uh, <laughs> no i like them i okay, think they're good. really dope nah, so you. i was wondering do you are you the creative director behind a lot of your most stuff of, most of the time yeah um it is a collaborative uh collaborative effort yeah but most of the time like um for my recent video wish you well we had some mm -hmm. ideas floating around and some things didn't go through. Like we wanted to rent a jail, like uh -huh. a real deal situation. Oh but wow! We couldn't do. How it. do you even go about doing Rent, that? renting I'm sorry. a jail? No, no, it's good. It's, yeah. How do you even we, tell them like? Yo. It's just like. Uh, <laughs> well, you don't. Can go, I rent this jail? <laughs> nah, well, you don't rent actual jail. Like we ain't renting like a physically running jail. This, okay. There's actually like film sites along in Florida. Like if you oh, look it wow. up, you can find jail, like places where our, like holding cells and jails are, and they film. They do movies and stuff there. Oh, that's lit! I didn't so, know that. But the thing that, that held us up in the up with the wish you well video it came out the video came out great and we yeah. went around it but they wanted us to I get they wanted, they wanted us we had to get a background check for every person on the scene we had to pay two contracts had to have an armed security guard on there and we was like man we gonna pay more for just that one scene than we are right. for the whole video so we kind of just really was being true with ourselves and trying to like look man it's better for our budget if we just work around so little right. things like that but the wish you well video the biz a lot of these videos, like I come up with the the, the main line, and then my director Brent or whoever I'm working with, yeah. he comes in and he you know fills in the blanks with his ideas. And a lot of stuff is shot on on scene, like on scene, like 
we catching, you know, just catching natural, like, just natural happening. stuff, like genuine moments right. that kind of just right. happen right. on camera. Right. See, and I feel like those are some of the best moments because the best it just makes it's real. It's so real, it's and it just looks it so good 100%. when you catch it. Um, so for your videos and stuff, would you say that like quality is everything? Listen. Everything. Quality is every everything. thing. It's everything, and I feel like people. Like, I'm very big on. It's your presentation. It's if someone you know. It's, it's just as equal as your performance, your, your delivery. Image. It's literally your image. So yeah. I feel a lot of people they don't understand that because right. I feel like we live in a world now. You know, it's always been that way. I'm not gonna say that we live in a world now, like you know, where social media, but right. on social media visualization is so key uh -huh. to getting people to follow you and your music and everything that you got going on and I feel like you have to take just as much pride in your visuals as you do your own music uh -huh. like your project the, you know all of that stuff you have to put just as much effort into it and then even your performances too like I'm a I'm a huge perfectionist so yeah you got to. I plan Gotta everything be. out all the way from the stage performance mm -hmm. all the way to you know the vocals and how it's set and then the, the videos like yeah. I have all of that in my that's head good. so I feel like that's so important people forget it so I feel like people but you know what made me scratch my head is like so we will spend uh you know a, a good amount of money on a video we'll get mm -hmm. into it with the cam we're shooting with a red camera we shooting with some nice models some you know nice i just camera. okay this What's is gonna up? sound so bad huh? i just heard what a red camera was yesterday yeah. somebody so you know, but somebody you know. yeah i heard you know. of it i was like red camera it's, it's quality like yeah. somebody said red camera and everybody turned in the room like yeah, we shooting 6k yeah okay yeah. <laughs> but, but the thing is, people don't know if you don't have a 6K, yeah. if, like if y'all phone ain't 6K and I'm shooting in 6K, it's not true 6K. It look good, but it's not real yeah. 6K. But what I was saying is we'll, we'll invest into a video, we'll work on it, you know, we'll put the time in, we'll script it out, get the actors okay. and everything like that. And it'll do a good 50,000, 100,000 views. Yeah. But then, let me tell you, this will make me scratch my head. We'll be at the gas station and I'll do a no effort freestyle. Uh -huh. It's a it's a it's like a challenge and it get two and a half million views. So at the same yeah. time, that goes back to what I said earlier. It's what them people like. It's yeah. Like, it's like I, I, the trend. I know that they do like like they, I see a response in the things that we doing like invest like the wish you well video. It's doing good. It's getting some views and mm -hmm. and the numbers are rising. But it's not that. It's not what they like. Them folks showed you. They showed you exactly what they wanted. When them views are shooting up every day in the shares, and that's how I got a yeah. lot of my following. Is when that video went viral. I went from on, on in Facebook. I literally went from like seven thousand followers, like a hundred thousand in. in months like, that's like running it up so See, but you know what that just goes to show that you was putting in like real yeah, work yeah. but i was your scratched. followers are organic it so didn't make sense to me at first because i'm like but it just showed me the people like when you really like if you got some bars you want to get them off and them folks gonna respond to what they relate yeah. to and get with so i had a that's what's up you know what I mean? that's what's up and you know what and you started early too I yeah. like that's another thing too like but i'm getting better i like of course when i first started i might have i might not i might have had the 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 vision to do it, but where I'm at now, and yeah. as far as lyrically, flow wise, being a, a, a lyrical mechanic, knowing when when mm -hmm. to use my voice in the right way and using my voice as an instrument is mm -hmm. a whole nother level of artistry than where I began at. Yeah, which is is it's, I, I, as an artist, you want to be heard as soon as you make a, of a course. song. Of course, but it's a blessing to me because. I'm not. I, I'm being heard, but my true fans know where I started from. Yeah. But now I'm at a point where I'm more of a polished and, and, and well well off artist. To where mm -hmm. when you first hear me now, it's more of a, a a good impression than oh he got some work to do. Now it's like yeah. Now ready. it's like okay he, he really ready. out here doing this. Like he really moving. So that's the difference that I, I would come across as. Now. Right. So what's your videos? I know we were talking a little bit of acting. Okay. Now. Do you want to do a little mm. bit of acting? Possibly, would you do? Well, you know what I'm saying. Don't, don't, put, don't put me on Love and Hip Hop on there, but um, <laughs> they don't. You know, they really don't nah. have no. What's who was what's his face? See, I don't follow Love and Hip Hop like Neither that. Neither do I. But <laughs> I just know that you know. So you definitely don't know. Only, I, I check, I check out my dog Trick Daddy, my dog um um who else um all the Miami folks. I check them out a little bit. Yeah, I don't really watch it. I definitely. Do. Nah, if you the were girls be in there watching, I might walk through the room and all stuff. That's about it. Now, if you were to play a movie role, what is your ideal role? Man. What kind of role would you want to play? Put, I, I mean, my first movie, I want y'all to I'm the wolf on Wall Street. You feel me? Leonardo DiCaprio Holes. You hear me? Straight up. Call my name EJ. Leonardo DiCaprio Holes. You hear me? That's my movie. I alter ego. <laughs> when I'm on the film, you know, if I ain't doing that, I might be in Thor and shit. Getting buff on 300 and shit. I'm ready for all that. All the, all the movie smoke. Let me get that. Because it ain't nothing for me to cut this beard to grow back. <laughs> I got I got this long hair 
hair under here like Thor. I'm a little skinny, but hey, give me all the weight program. You know what? I'm so done with you. I'm ready for that. All that. Look, I can use some hearts for that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Y'all know y'all ready for me like to be in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Y'all ready for me to cut off this beard? Do you, are you attached to your beard? I'm attached like, to that thing. Like, I, I, but you'll cut you, tell me to, you tell me to delete my beard off my face, I might delete your contact out. My, you know what I'm saying? This my, is my baby right here. And it get a lot of compliments, so I don't know, I don't care about the little minute people that's telling me to cut my beard. Like, yeah, I don't feel like, you know, I don't, I don't see, like, it's good. you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I trim it. I keep it trimmed, I keep it groomed. It's nice. You know, in the late, it's you, know, nice. you know, yeah, it's a good seat. I see you, I see you. <laughs> it's a good job. <laughs> it works. It really works. <laughs> I cannot do it. Do you think that's your... That's, that's your, part of my image. My so I have a bun and a beard, some gold teeth. So you teeth. wearing your man blood. Yeah, I wear my man You know they be making Instagram posts about the man blood and the beard. Day. Okay. All Those day. girls love it. Okay. Hey, what well, work for you, if it ain't right. good, don't fix it. Nah, I ain't trying to put you on the spot, nah, but... Good. <coughs> we do got some female fans on here. Shout out to them. I hit that shout out to shout them. Shout out to the female so fans. That's the mark. Like, are you, are you single? I'm a single man. Uh, I'm, no, you know what? My relationship status is happy. There happy. you go. I love that. Don't even ask me am I, I single. Do that. I got a girl? Do, I am, I, oh, am I out here in the street? I'm I happy. I'm happy. happy. What That's I my hear status. that. That's I my hear best that. status I can give you. I happy. hear that. So, Bless. all right. So, do where do you see? I'm sorry, I'm tripping. No, you good. So where do you see yourself in, I'll say five. Five years? You know what? I, what, let's do let's do five years and then we'll do your ten years game plan. So in five years, where do you see yourself? Which or where would you like to see yourself um, with your music? Five years, I want to be. Um, how you doing? Um, I want to be on somebody's tour, of course. That's like Hell my yeah. good goals. You know, what I'm saying to be not only as a tour. Who would you want to be on tour with? Oh man, I. It wouldn't really as long as as long as, long as, as, as adult yeah, tour. There's so, there's so many artists that I could name. Mm -hmm. I really would, you know. Let me put. Let me go on Drake tour. I'll steal all Drake fans. What? <laughs> you know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, Drake. Yeah. I wanna, I steal. That's, that's gonna the, go viral for this but one. But that's the reason. That's, that's the reason for a tour. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the whole reason for a tour, bro. You'll fix me up. That's the whole reason for the tour, though. Is is just. Yeah. You know, getting out there and being exposed and being able to take these people fans. Like, of course, mm -hmm. you can't. You might not have came to see legit, but when you left, you're like, who's this guy? Huh? Like, right. You know, so that kind of thing. So that's my, my one of my goals for the next five years. Of course, to be on the main. Like right, right now, we own little tours, like uh, getting our feet wet, getting into mm -hmm. the mix of things, yeah, running yeah. the moves. But a, a, a long term goal is to get on a major tour and eventually have our own tour. Of course. Because um, right now, our next five, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do an independent tour called maybe the Real Fan Only Tour. And what I want to do is I want to actually have intimate shows with people. Maybe, um, you know, I want to be select few. Like we can, we can really like do some clubs, but I'd rather do a private event, 30, 40 people. I love that. Eat dinner with them, See, like bring them people. some merchandise. The real deal. Like, yeah. Like, uh, intimate show where we create lifelong fans instead of like coming here and like I might see you in a club and oh you. Exactly. And then speak. it's like exactly. And it's so crazy because I, I was talking to someone about that. I was telling them like. That intimacy with your fans. Actually, I think I was talking to Derek about this, um, mm -hmm. and we were talking about having an intimacy with your fans because if you don't have that real connection, connection with people, they're not gonna like you for real. Like you know, they're not gonna support you for real because people can see your stuff all the time. They can yeah. see you doing and moving and whatever you got going on, but the actual support system yeah. is not gonna stick. Yeah. So I feel like I love that you said that because a lot of people are so focused on just reaching to such a major just a big group of people right and i just feel like connect with who fucks with you I like you feel me because when those people fuck with you you see how y'all say fans are okay they will tear anybody you know, rihanna navy the beehive okay yeah. listen they are coming for your heads if you listen the, the and true, that's that intimate reaction you saying, that, yeah, the true success for any artist is a core fan base mm -hmm. that I don't care what it is, I'm supporting them fan base. You know what I'm of saying? Course. I don't care if Legit come out with some toilet paper because he the shit. But I'm wiping my ass with Legit toilet paper. Fuck that. You hear me? Like, that's what we need. You know what I'm saying? So folks that support you for real are gonna really Hi. support anything, you know. Yeah. Not not them, oh shit, I like this song. And maybe that's the yeah. you know, that kind of thing. The, that's fast food customers. They here today, they, yep. come, they coming back. They I need some yep. soul. I gotta stick to your real. You yep. know? Give me some soul food fans. Yep. That's what Absolutely. we like. So if you were to give advice to an, an upcoming artist who's trying to get where you are, because like mm -hmm. I said, you do have a large thank audience, you, you do have a solid fan base, what would your advice be for them? Stop trying to be like who hot. 
Okay. Because you're not gonna be like them. They hot because of them. They that's them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I hear a Drake song, if I hear somebody's song, I can admire it as a fan, but I'm Facts. not gonna go in the studio and try to duplicate that, recreate mm -hmm. that. You know, you got to be the to be a brand new artist. You got to break through. You got to cut through. Yeah. So you gotta be if you go exactly, you got to be the new guy on the block with this new sound, or this new song, yeah, who this is new this? dance. What separates you from the rest? Exactly. So that's that's what I would say. You know, cut through, tell your story. If you need to do it in a certain light, the way, it, but make sure it's different. You know, you might have the same right. story as this person. As you know, you, you doing the trap shit. You doing whatever you doing. Mm -hmm. But God, man, you gonna say the same shit, and you gonna be the same thing. Why do we need you? Right. Because it's millions of artists out here that's rapping, singing. Talent is there. You feel me? Boom. It's what what you gonna cut through with, like. Boom. And, Real spill out I don't, here. And your phone right now, it's millions of artists that's already out and popping. You feel me? So why do we need to listen to your new shit? Yeah. Why? You're not needed. You gotta be wanted. So that's what I would tell you. Okay. Real spill from Lee J. Sure. Okay. For sure. I wanna go ahead and thank you. Thank for you coming so much. Uh, it was so nice for the culture. To meet you gotta you. do it for the for culture. culture. Y'all make 100%. sure y'all follow Lee J. Drop all your social media. Everything that you follow you man. on and stuff for that. Yeah, Lee J. White boy bad. Lee J. White boy bad. Follow me, follow me at Lee J. Lie. That's L E E G I T L I V E. You look lost. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> And if um, you're looking for some new music, I'm on Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, SoundCloud, YouTube, you hear me? Okay. New project coming up. <laughs> the wet tape is coming. Wet tape for the ladies only. You hear me? Wet tape. Women's erotic testimonies is what it stands for. So check it out. You know? <laughs> and, um, and me and Rail Carter and all the other artists on the Rail Carter. Shout out to Rail Carter. Though. We got the No Handout mixtape coming. So y'all check that out. No Handouts coming in July. Wet tape coming right behind it. You hear me? So make sure you get on that shit, man. Get on it. For, sure. for the culture. Bad. Hey.